how to change lifelong thinking habits and how to do it rather quickly rather than the old model of believing that it takes a long time and a lot of therapy and a lot of examination and a lot, that what I was given was a way of rearranging how you think. I call it the excuses be gone paradigm. And I'll explain why I use the word excuses, which are just our self definitions and explanations for why we are the way we are. I want to go through the biggest excuses that we have for why we can't change and what we can do about them. I would like to go through the seven principles that if you get these principles down, then we can work the paradigm. And the paradigm is a way of you examining what it is that you have been doing for a lifetime that you would like to be able to change, no matter how difficult or obscure or fanciful that may sound to you, that um, you would like to be able to shift around these long-held ways of thinking that are justified by a whole host of excuses, which I'll go through with you, okay? And I want to work it. And um, I've invited some people here who've got some real things to work on in their life that I would like to work with in front of you, if you're willing. So we'll try to just mix it up the best we can. Now, one of the real keys to moving into a place where excuses are no longer a part of your life is to live what Lao Tzu called a Tao-centered life, T-A-O, Tao-centered life, or what in the West we call God-realization. And Einstein had this wonderful line, you know, it's like, a, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing it, when they ask him about quantum physics and so on, he said, it's all details. I'm not interested in the details. He said, the only thing I want to do is to learn to think like God thinks. Whatever God means to you, and you can be an atheist, it doesn't matter, you know. It's like, whatever God means to you. To me, it is that invisible, divine energy source from which all things originate, to which all things return, which no one can dispute. Everything comes out of spirit. Everything comes out of invisibleness. Everything, including you and me and everything you see around you. Everything that is proved was once just imagined. And we are the products of God's imagination. We come out of that source. So what T.S. Eliot was speaking about was returning to the place from which we originated and knowing it for the first time. He was speaking about dying. I'm speaking about being able to do that without dying, without leaving your body. To get to that place, to know your source and to live from it for the first time. I've written books about, you know, like way back, from erroneous owns, which is overcoming self-defeating behaviors and all of this. This is so different than that. It's, it's really about connecting so closely to God consciousness that excuses become an impossibility or explanations for why you're not the way you were intended to be or the way you would like to be are no longer a viable way for you to talk about yourself or anything in your life. You become one with God. You literally become God. And when you go there, you begin to just very slowly, very gradually, as you really work at banishing the ego, at least taming it, and just pushing it to the side, as you get better and better at that place where we've always edged God out with our ego, and get to the place where that's where you are coming from, that you start to access divine cooperation and synchronicities and the things that you were looking for and so on that, that always seem to elude you before. And even the things that are eluding you are things that you say thank you for. <laughs> Getting to know God, not from a religious perspective at all, but just from a, a knowing perspective. It's been my experience that people who talk about religion almost always want to argue about it. And people who talk about the spirituality just want to share it. You know? And that's really one of the big differences. There's nothing to argue about here. This isn't going to contrast in any way with any of your religious 
teachings. And if it, even if it does, so what? You know, you say, well, that's just his point of view. <laughs> so getting there, there's many avenues, there's many things that you do, and I've learned a lot of them just even in the last few years of my life. And as Marianne Williamson, my dear friend, often says that, you know, as you move up this ladder of spirituality, says God starts to send you smarter people. <laughs> or different kinds of people that you love fall into your life. I am going to go through the seven principles for what I call an excuses be gone way of life. Every excuse is a misalignment. We're going to think like God, and God never uses excuses. It's a seven-part paradigm that was channeled to me on um, how to really examine habituated thinking, subconscious thinking, whatever you want to call it, that has led you to believe that you have to be the way that you are. So there's really two components to living the Tao. One is learning what to think. Two, which I think is even more significant, because just because you know what to think doesn't mean that you know how to go about changing these thought systems that have been so much a part of your life. And I'm not here to put anything or anyone down. It's not about finding fault with all the things that happened to you when you were a kid and what your parents did wrong, and cultural influences, and going back and then judging it and then trying to come to grips with it, which different kinds of therapy promote and so on. And it's fine if it works, but that's not what this is about. Aristotle, I think it was, said that uh, habits rule the unreflecting herd. We become like sheep because our habits are what rule us. And shifting out of that space into one in which we, at any given moment, at any given time, whatever it is that you would like to see changed in your life, you are on top of how your mind is going to be working all the time. I don't call it the conscious and the unconscious mind. Um, I call it the conscious and the habituated mind. I don't like the concept of unconscious because it implies that we're impotent when it comes to dealing with it. After all, it's not conscious. I can't help it. It's just what I do. It's what happens. And beginning to see the ways that you've traditionally allowed yourself to think and act and behave, it's just a habit of thought. And if you can get a hold of that thought and begin to examine it and see it from a different perspective, the display quote for this book, you know, every book has a display quote, the very front is like a sentence or just a statement that summarizes it all. The display quote for this book is, don't believe everything you think. Hardly any of the things that you think really hold up under scrutiny. And when you get a hold of this mind of yours, this invisible part of yourself, the part of yourself that is a piece of God and is God-like, and it's just got lost in the whole shuffle of uh, taking on the ego, the belief system that says I am what I have and I am what I do and I am what other people think of me. And I'm separate from everyone, and I'm separate from what's missing in my life, and most egregiously, I'm separate from God. I mean, that's all the components of the ego. It's a component of us that Muktananda, the great Indian saint, called the false self. I heard a, uh, a minister friend of mine here on Maui was telling me about uh, one of their parishioners, and they had a little boy who was five years old, and he was very rambunctious and thought he might be dangerous because the mother came home from the hospital with a brand new baby so now his little brother was in the house and they had to watch the older boy all the time because they figured maybe he thinks he's a frisbee you know and they'll throw him off the roof or something you know so um, they would watch him very carefully whenever he was around and, and the little five-year-old boy was in the room and the little baby was just a few months old and he was talking to his little brother and they overheard him say could you could you tell me, could you please tell me what God is like? I think I'm forgetting. Isn't that precious? Just think of that. 
this 